Today we talk about evaluating the situation. Understanding that your situation is not in a void. I'm Dr. Mark Amos, and this is Taco About Fertility Tuesday. What do I mean when I say not in a void? I'm specifically talking about the idiom that states when something does not exist or operate in isolation. And I'm specifically talking about outcomes in fertility. It is human nature, and you've heard me talk about it before, to compare ourselves. And not only do we compare ourselves, but sometimes we forget that our situation is not in a void, and that we forget that those things can affect our chances. And so I'm going to give a couple examples first of some cases I've had and want to talk about, because this could be you, how it may be affecting things. So for example, I have cases of IVF where we go and we get lots of eggs, we fertilize the eggs, and the fertilization is very poor. The patient's upset, and I'd be upset too. I mean, no one wants a bad result. And they are upset saying, you know, why is the clinic so bad at doing ICSI? You know, why wasn't my rates better? You put the sperm into the egg. And they're right. Just like I've talked in other podcasts, it doesn't make sense why it wouldn't work. But the thing I talk to them about next is it's important to look at the sperm. And so, for example, in this situation, this person had very severe sperm values. And I mean very severe, I mean less than a million total sperm. And so one of the things I mentioned to the patient is we have to look at this not in the void and the fact that a man who already has severely low sperm could be associated with bad sperm quality, meaning the actual DNA of the sperm could be bad. And that could be leading to the poor fertilization. This specific case actually happened with one of my patients, her husband, greatest guy in the world, but he was very unhealthy and not like overweight unhealthy. He actually looked cachexic where he you know, looked like he didn't have any meat or anything on his body. And it was because he had an infection in the past and that, that caused this. And his sperm was okay, but their fertilization was poor all the time. and so. In this same situation, I had to say to her, like, listen, I know we're not seeing anything in the sperm specifically saying there's something wrong, but we can't look at this situation and not assume there could be something wrong there. Because one, his potential health battles could be affecting, and two, the sperm isn't perfect, and maybe that's a reflection of sperm. And come to find out, when she made embryos, they weren't working and they were ending in miscarriages. And as soon as they used donor sperm, she got pregnant right away on the very first transfer and had success. Now, I run into this also in other situations. So for example, people will have poor fertilization and they'll be upset going, well, why are my eggs fertilizing abnormal? So in this situation, they're fertilizing, but when they're fertilizing, they're abnormal in the fact that they have extra DNA in them. So they have what we call like a 3PN or they're missing DNA and could be a 1PN. The PNs are the pronuclears that we see after fertilization. And I explained them that it could be an egg issue or a sperm issue. But then I have to explain them that because of their diminished ovarian reserve, it's more likely an egg issue. And they're like, but you got eggs. I mean, why would it not work? I don't understand. And I explain them, well, If your AMH is 0.2, if you are having to give high doses of medication that make eggs grow, you have to look at that situation and go, something's not normal. I may only get five eggs from someone who's had surgery in their ovaries, and those could be the best five eggs in the world. But the reason the person is making five eggs is because she has less ovarian tissue because of the surgeries. But the person who has never had surgeries, who has diminished ovarian reserve, 
and is requiring very high doses of medications to get those eggs, that is a different story. And in that situation, it's most likely the eggs that are the problem. And that's what I mean by not in the void. It's really important to take all that stuff into consideration because it could be impacting it. I know this may sound like common sense, and it should, but we're looking at it from this view here. But when the patient's going through it, and maybe you've been going through this, it's not as easy to see. In their mind, they're looking at going, okay, I'm 35, I'm healthy, I work out all the time, I've never smoked, I don't do drugs. Why is this not working? And that's when you have to look at and go, okay, but to even get to that point of getting the eggs, what's different about you? Yeah, your friend, she also got maybe only 12 eggs and everything works out fine. You only got six, but what's the difference here? Did your friend only need a little bit of med to get those eggs and you were on the highest dose possible or maybe even the strongest protocol known to that clinic? If that's true, then you can't really look at yourself and say, well, why isn't my result like hers? Because your result is different because something's different about you. And this is common in everything we see, right? When, when someone tells you that, hey, you know, John down the street apparently is in prison now. And you're like, what? They're like, yeah, he was just doing something, got in trouble. You would be shocked because John's always been an upstanding person. But when someone tells you that Gary, who has been to prison 18 times, is back in prison, you're like, well, yeah, that's, that's Gary. That's what, that's what Gary does. He, he goes back to prison. We don't question and go, you know, Gary's been really good recently. Like he's been like picking up his trash. I saw him mowing the neighbor's lawn. Like that's really weird. He went back to prison. No, because we realize that those 18 times of going to prison means there's something there that's different about Gary. By the way, sorry to any Gary's out there. I'm not trying to pick on you. Now, I'm not telling you this to make you concerned that you're never going to get pregnant. I'm telling you this because this is important to know. Because going through fertility is like a marathon. And if you are sitting there thinking, this is never going to work, you probably aren't going to keep going. And so the point of this is to explain that if you are in one of these situations where you are using the highest doses possible, your husband has severe sperm, if something's different about your eggs, then you got to take that into the equation of, okay, this might be harder. And I have this conversation with my patients. I am very upfront. I say to them, this is going to be difficult. I can't even promise you if it's going to work. I don't even know where we're going to get embryos, but I let them know that from the beginning, not to be pessimistic. It's the opposite. I'm extremely optimistic. I think it's going to work every single time. I'm constantly disappointed because I'm overly optimistic. But the reason I tell them that is I need them to be prepared for the battle they have ahead. And so if you're looking at not in the void going, oh my God, everything sucks. Everything's bad. Like, I don't, it's maybe this, maybe that, maybe it's because I'm doing this. You have to go and look and say, wait, I'm not going to look at this in the void. I'm going to look at this and go, wait, what's happening? What am I needing to do to be able to get these eggs? Am I doing things different than everyone else? If I am, then maybe there's something deeper going on here. It's no different than when someone has recurrent miscarriages and then we get a PGTA report back and it shows that almost all the embryos are abnormal and they're like, what's going on here? And I say to them, no, that this makes sense. This is why you've had so many miscarriages. This explains it. It's not just you can't look at your age and go, but everyone else who's 35 has lots of embryos. No. It's that your situation is different. We can't look in a void. We have to look and go, wait a second, all those miscarriages actually are pointing to why this is now normal for you. Sure, it still sucks. No one's happy about it, but at least it makes sense. In the end, no matter what, unless you are just a machine, it is always difficult going through fertility treatment. It is stressful. It's exhausting on your relationship. And it's hard to keep going sometimes. So what's really important is if you do have a bad outcome, don't just look at it as a bad outcome, but look at it and say, okay, let's not look at it not in the void, but look at it in the standpoint of what was different. 
Was my cycle the same as everyone else's? Was there something different about my egg quality when it came out? Was there something about the sperm that's different? Is, is my partner unhealthy or healthy? And then by looking all that, you're able then to clearly go, okay, now this is making sense. And it will keep your eye on the prize. And you'll have realistic expectations and you will be successful. Now that successful may not be the way you wanted to do. It might be a different option, such as even donor eggs. But the point is, you will be able to evaluate that situation better because you're not looking at it as just, I'm a 35-year-old woman who's healthy, but you're going to look at it from the whole picture going, wait a second, yeah, I'm 35, but it is weird I'm making so few eggs and they're having to use very high doses. And maybe I have to look at it from the standpoint that this is probably the best I can do. And that's because that's just me. My body's different. As I always say, please feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to answer questions you guys have. This might be your scenario. Maybe you're one of those people who, you know, do a transfer and maybe it didn't work and you're looking for answers. And it's easy to go, why me? All my friends are getting pregnant. And this is the type of thing where a doctor can look at everything and and kind of show you that, hey, there is more going on here and that it's not something you're doing wrong. It's not something really wrong with you. There's just a different situation here. So hopefully this helps some of you. Again, please feel free to reach out, talk to your doctors. Most important, you know, just get that explanation. Not so much just because you can fix it, but because it will help you stay motivated and have the right expectations to have success. As always, I greatly appreciate everyone who listens to this podcast and tells everyone about it. We're doing great, and I really appreciate all the help. If you love us, give us a five-star review and tell your friends about us. I look forward to talking to you again next week on Taco Bell Fertility Tuesday.